Hi, it's Jess here with another advent calendar video. So in this video I've made a cute little gift box that is shaped to look like a camera. So if you order a lot of photos from places like Officeworks, you get your photos given to you in a photo box if you have over like, I don't know, a hundred or so. And so I saved this box knowing I needed to do something with it. And so what I have done is I have stuck the lid closed and cut out one of the sides and then covered the whole thing in paper, decorative paper, a little bit of washi tape just to make it look fancy. And now I'm working on making it look like a camera. So I've made an accordion fold um, just of a piece of scrap paper and I'm just cutting out a circle. So what I'm focusing on at the moment is the lens of the camera. So the accordion fold is going to make the lens sort of stick out a little bit because as you know on a traditional like a DSL camera, it sticks out from the front of the camera square box part. So I am using my hot glue gun a lot for this um, particular item because it's easier, it dries quickly and I'm in a little bit of a hurry. I'm a little bit pressed for time to get this done. So I am hot glue gunning the accordion fold into a ring around the circle that I cut out using my diamond press and it's approximately a one and a half inch circle one to one and a half inch circle and I then cut another circle to go on top of white paper and then a really cute blue vellum like white vellum but with blue um, flowers on it the collection I'm using is the cooker vanilla but uh, Wild at Heart, I was going to say Bohemian Dreams, that's their new one, the Wild at Heart um, collection. So I cut out the vellum circle and I glued it onto the front of the camera. So it goes plain white circle, accordion fold ring, plain white circle, uh, vellum, and now I'm just cutting out a cute little blue ring that I will hot glue gun and it will sort of be um, just a nice looking border edge around that lens just to make it look a little bit more like it pops out a little bit. So that is the lens front of the camera there. So now just to add a few more little details to make it look a little bit more camera-y. So I just got a plain grey piece of paper and cut out a square to be the flash and two little buttons in a red and a purpley pink colour just to be sort of the light up button thingies that you see on the front of camera. Not really sure, just trying to give it a little bit of pizzazz on the front there. I don't know all the bits and pieces on a camera. I was just trying to, um, I looked up Pinterest and trying to copy some of the ideas that other people had done that had done a similar type camera box. So I decided to back this square flash in a little piece of the vellum as well just to sort of mirror that with what I'd done with the lens because I thought that was cute. Um, I also am about to I think cut a big vellum circle that I put down underneath the lens before I attach it onto the camera just because I think that adds um, just a little bit more cuteness, a little bit more softness around the joins when putting that lens onto the front of the camera. So I'm really happy with the way this camera is looking. I think it's really, really cute. And I didn't do anything fancy to make the box. As I said earlier, I'm just using a box that I already had um, that's the perfect size for 4x6 photos. So that's a bit of an approximate idea as to what size the box is. So sorry, I don't have any measurements, but essentially it is the size of a four by six photo, but it's quite wide. It would probably be a full inch, maybe an inch and a half wide. It's quite a wide box, which you will see as the video continues on. So keep watching. So I've just glued on the lens there. So I did put down a little bit of vellum first and then the lead lens um, cylinder that I had already made, then my two little buttons, and now my little flash. So that's the front of the camera pretty much finished. 
um, I now just want to do a little bit of work on the very top of the camera and then I will go on with what's going to be inside the camera. So um, according to Pinterest and according to Google Images, on top of the camera there's a few sort of bits and pieces, a few little buttons. So I get a little flare button, I think that's what I'm doing right now, that's got a little love, purple love heart in it, which I think is super cute. And, oh, I was testing out um, a different one then, but it didn't work. And then another button to be, you know, your two little... I think the idea was back when you had film, or maybe it's the... Um, when you're twisting the top buttons on the top of a DSL camera and your DSLR camera and you're working out what mode you need it to be. Not 100% sure, but it's cute, so I'm going with it. So I put those two buttons on and then think it needs a little bit more dimension. There's not much happening, so I end up piling together three little white buttons so it has a little bit more height to it and I think that's really cute and it's starting to really come together so I am going to be making a flip book in the second half of this video that's why it is such a long one and the flip book is going to be all about Katie and my son so I am just putting their names up on top of the camera um, just so she knows what the album is about and what's happening inside the album and I love the white, but the white is a little bit hard to see, I noticed in hindsight, but I wasn't going to pull them off. So that, and that is it. That is my camera done. So I am now ready to move on with making of the flip book. Now I don't have a tutorial of actually the putting together of the book, the physical book. I've just got um, how I embellished it and how I, um, yeah, embellished it. That's the only word I can think to use for this description. So I made the flip book a way I've never done before. It's a bit of an accordion fold flip book. And the reason why I made it this way is because I wanted to make sure it was the, the spine was the width of the camera. And I used the piece that I cut out to glue onto the spine of the book so that I know for sure it will fit back in perfectly and there'll be no gaps coming out because I want it to look as though there's nothing there. I want it to look if you were just looking at the camera box that you just thought it was a camera box and the album was just like a little added bonus that is inside. So I am using this beautiful collection, Wild at Heart, and I'm really using this collection because I know it's Katie's favourite and... I'd been hoarding it because it is gorgeous and I thought what a better way to use it than to put on a bunch of photos of my favourite sister, she's my only sister, and my little man. So I thought that would be a perfect way to use up some of this gorgeous collection. So this is the Coco Vanilla Wild at Heart collection and I'm pretty much exclusively only using that. The, the few other bits and pieces that I am using that is not from that is um, the cut apart sheet that comes with the Kidaholics kits if uh, you get one of those. So this takes me a little bit of time. I was pretty organized. I printed the photos on my Canon selfie and I thought I'd printed them a good size, but I printed them still a bit too big. So I have to trim each one down to fit and have enough room for embellishing. And even then it's quite tight. But I figure that's okay because the point of this flip book is to be about photos, not really about the embellishing. The embellishing is just for fun. So I hope you are enjoying our advent calendar series this is my very last video you will not have any more from me and i have just finished making this card album and it is approximately 7 30 pm on the 30th of november and i don't see katie that often so obviously i want her to have all of her advent calendar things on the 1st of December and not have to give her the other half later on in the year or oh, sorry in the year in the month 
So I have madly, madly, madly tried to get this calendar, calendar, um, this camera mini album finished and I've just made it in time and I am, as soon as I finish this voiceover, I'm going to check that hubby had no drama getting little man to bed and I am going to rush over to her place, which is not really nearby, it's about a 30 minute drive and give her her advent calendar so nothing like cutting it fine and leaving things to the last minute um what am I up to oh I'm halfway maybe it's quite challenging to fill this um video with dialogue because there's not a huge amount that's happening you can sort of see what I'm doing it's more my thought process so I could probably put on some music for you so that you didn't have to listen to me rave on about random things. If you are interested in a bit more of a real tutorial on how I made the camera box or even the flip book, please let me know and I can make one for you in another month in January or February or something. Um, Oh, if you're seeing a peg randomly stuck there, that is because I have made a little a little um, drawstring, a little ribbon loop that is going through the spine of the book so that when Katie needs to pull out the mini album, she's got something to grab hold of. And I put more than one string on and I'm just gluing the strings together just so they just add an extra special bond so they don't come undone because sometimes... It's a really thin string and a ribbon and sometimes the string can just pull out if you yank a bit too hard because the ribbon's a bit slimy, a bit silky. So that's what that is there. So you're probably noticing now that um, as the further into the flip book I get, the less it will stay open. That's because I haven't made this the most perfect way I could have. Um, and if I had time, I would have redone the binding on this book but I really wanted as I said earlier I really wanted to make sure that it was the width of the spine the the spine was the width of the camera and so I used that same piece that I cut out just to make sure it definitely stayed that same width and you may have noticed before when I was just testing that it fitted in the box um, how quite widely spaced each of the pages are so I technically could have had a lot more pages in this book. I just, uh, A, didn't have time to create too many pages and B, um, just picked my best photos of Katie and Jack that I wanted to use. Um, and I also like leaving space in between each of the pages so that when you put on your embellishing and put on your chunkier pieces... Uh, the book doesn't um, bust out too much it, it stays the width it's supposed to be which in this particular book I've got heaps of space to do that so that's good so you'll notice as well especially when I started embellishing this that I'd sort of grabbed a few pieces of embellishment and planned out how to decorate each of the pages I hadn't completely finished and I hadn't completely planned out 100% what was going on each page but I'd sort of spread out the frames or I'd spread out a spread out certain sayings or certain words just so that they each picture had something and that they didn't say the same thing on every single page or it was too repetitive on every single page so um, it, it also made the making of the flip book a little bit quicker because some of the decision making had already been done and I could just not think too much about it and go because it is an extremely hot day in uh, Victoria at the moment. I was sitting here just dripping, um, not used to being this hot this early in the year and unfortunately my cooling is not working uh, and so I eventually went and got a fan, but I was worried that a fan might blow my things away. So I kept the fan quite a distance from where I was working. And it definitely helped, definitely. But, oh gosh, it was still hot. So I was starting to sort of wilter 
the longer this process took. And of course, the more you wilter, again, the longer it takes you to actually get it done because you're not as um, motivated or you're not as effective in what you're doing. So I'm getting there. So the photos I've chosen to use of Katie and my little man are ranging from the very first day he was born right up until a most recent one. So there isn't one for like every month or anything like that. Some of them are quite close together in age, some of them are further apart, but it's just a little bit of a mix of the last sort of two, almost two years. Can you believe that? He is almost two. Wow. How did that happen? Last page, yay, you're almost at the end of my raving on and randomly talking about nothing. Um, Thank you if you have been watching all of our Advent Calendar videos. We really appreciate all of your likes and comments and um, thumbs up and things like that. That's been really, really great and really motivating. This is the second year we've done this Advent Calendar series and we love it because who doesn't love getting little presents every day? Um, It is always a mad rush right to the end to get all the videos done in time. But thankfully this year I made it. Last year I didn't. Last year I had a few I had to give Katie during the month. Um... There were no videos of our making this year, sorry, decorating this year. Last year we uploaded videos of how we decorated our beautiful advent calendars. This year you all just have to get a surprise every day when we open them. Um, I thought that was a little bit nicer actually. I felt like last year I was showing you how Katie had decorated each of my gifts when you'd already seen it if you had watched the um, embellishing or the decorating videos. So... I think this is a nicer surprise for each day. So I hope you have enjoyed um, seeing a video from us every day and you haven't got sick of our voices yet. Luckily there are two of us and you get to split it up a little bit and have some of Katie and some of me. Though we have been told numerous times that we sound very similar. So perhaps you feel like you're just listening to the same person over and over again so hopefully not and hopefully you um, are enjoying this and you're not sick of us so I'm on the final touches for the advent uh, for the advent calendar gosh I'm mixing my words up dreadfully today I'm on the final touches for the um, mini book now for the mini album I'm just putting in some diamantes they're sort of a peach color I think you might say a peach or a yeah yeah I'm just gonna say peach um and they're yeah different three different size diamantes I love the different sizes I often use you know a big one and a small one because I think it's really cute uh I found a gap I wasn't happy with that hole so I'm filling it it was okay when I first started but as I went on and I filled up the album more and more and more I decided that gap didn't work didn't suit the album so If you have a lot of supply, a mini album like this is an awesome way to use up a whole bunch of papers and or even project life cards if you're doing it this size. This is four by six size so you could easily use project life cards or um, use up a whole bunch of your uh, embellishment packs. So here is a close up of the beautiful camera box which I love. I just think that looks so cute and then the flip book goes inside it in that gap there which you can see and I've made two little tags that sit on the side and you just pull on the tags to pull out your flip book oh, look at it and then out comes your flip book and it's got these super cute photos and really gorgeous embellishing of Katie and my little baby who's not a little baby anymore he's a real little boy I don't know when that happened and I'm just really happy with it I think it looks great as I said I would redo the binding or the spine of this book a different way if I um, was to do this again but in general I'm really happy with the way it turned out and you just store it all together on a shelf like this really cute camera 
So I've got a few close-up photos for you as always because I know it's a little bit easier to see how things turned out when you can actually have it closer. But isn't it the best? How cute is that? I just love the little camera more than anything. Um, so each of these pages you watched me do, so you've probably seen enough of them and you've heard enough of me already, I am sure. <laughs> I am going to be signing off any minute now and I will see you back in January with our next, no series, but our next videos. Have a very Merry Christmas and a wonderful New Year and I will see you then. Bye guys.